Hi guys. So in our knowledge unit, we are continuing to learn about astronomy. Now, this is our second lesson in astronomy and we are learning about the earth and the sun. As you can see, we have a beautiful picture here that looks like what you might see if you're out there looking at Lake Erie. And out in the distance there, you see the sun. And I am going to read to you the story and we're gonna flip through the picture. So listen carefully, okay? Listen as I tell you about how the earth has some rotation and that helps us with our daytime and our nighttime, all right? All plants, animals, and people rely on the sun for life. The sun's energy gives life to plants, which in turn provides food for animals and people. The sun's heat keeps the surface of the earth warm enough for plants and animals to survive. For people on earth, it makes sense to say that the sun rises in the morning. Each morning at dawn, the sun appears on the horizon in the eastern sky. This right here, if you see it, let's see if I can highlight that a little bit. Is that gonna show up on the picture? It might not. But if you see along the edge where the water, and you can see where the water might meet the land, that's the horizon. Okay, the line way off in the distance. At dawn, some people say, look, the sun is coming up. The first appearance of the sun above the eastern horizon is called sunrise. Oh, look at that beautiful picture. Over the course of the day, the sun appears to move across the sky, gradually following its path from east to west in the evening, the sun sets in the west. Ever so slowly, it gets lower in the sky and disappears below the horizon. That's when the people say the sun is going down. This disappearance of the sun below the western horizon is called sunset. So based on what we can see from where we live on Earth, it seems sensible to say that the sun moves across the sky each day rising or moving up in the east and setting or sinking down in the west. But that's not actually true. It is the daily rotation or spin of the earth that makes the sun appear to rise and set each day. Oh, looky there. Earth rotates or spins on its axis. Imagine the Earth's axis as an imaginary pole sticking through the center of the planet from north to south. It takes 24 hours or one day for the Earth to spin or rotate all of the way around one time. So right now I want everyone to stand up and I want you to spin around one time, just one time. And then I want you to sit back down. Do it. Okay, let's move on. This daily rotation explains why there is always day and night on Earth. As it spins, certain parts of Earth's surface face the sun, receiving its heat and light. When it is light on one side of the Earth, it is dark on the other side. So if it is daytime where you are right now, then on the other side of the earth, it is nighttime and the children there are sound asleep. And when you are nestled in your bed tonight, children on the other side of the planet will be waking up to a bright new day. I wish I had my globe with me and we could talk about this, but I don't because I left it in the classroom and we're not in the classroom, but if I had my globe, I would show you because everyone on this half, if it's sunny, we have daytime and this half has nighttime, okay? This spinning or rotation of the earth, however, is not the only way earth moves in space. Because earth is a planet, it also moves or revolves around the sun. The word planet means a large object in space that revolves around a star for light. 
Earth moves or revolves around the sun following a constant path. The path that Earth follows around the sun is called the Earth's orbit. Earth follows the same path as it revolves around or orbits the sun. It takes about 365 days or one whole year for the Earth to make one complete orbit or revolution around the sun. But how and why does the Earth orbit the sun? The answer to this question involves one of the most important lessons you can learn in the study of astronomy. In space, there are large objects like the sun, and there are smaller objects like the Earth and the moon. All objects in space actually pull on all other objects, but larger objects pull harder than smaller objects. The force that causes objects to pull on each other is called gravity. And this pulling at objects, this pulling action happens the force of the sun's gravity and holds the earth in place. Although earth continues to follow its orbit around the sun, the earth does not wander off into space. The sun's gravity holds the earth in place. Look at that. Just as the sun pulls the earth and other objects out in space, the earth pulls on objects on or near its surface. Because of this, your feet stay planted firmly on the ground. And if you jump up, you come right back down. If you throw a ball in the air, it falls right back down. This force of gravity holds things on the ground and holds the planet Earth in orbit around the sun. I want you to do me another favor. I want you to stand up. Before you do anything, I want you to think, what will happen if I jump? Will I stay floating in the air or will I come right back down? Think, what will happen to me? And then I want you to jump one time, jump. Did you stay up in the air or did you come back down? If you stayed up in the air, then you must be up in space somewhere where gravity's not all that strong for us. But if you came right back down, we have some gravity. Earth's gravity is pulling you back down. Let's see what's happening here. You cannot tell that the Earth is always moving as you sit in your classroom or at home or wherever you happen to be. It rotates and spins all day and every day as it travels on its year-long course around the sun. These two types of movement, the rotation and the orbit of the Earth, create the day and year that we use to keep track on our calendar. I hope you liked this lesson on astronomy today. Watch the other YouTube videos so that you get more information and help us with these topics since we can't discuss it together. And I will see you again tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.